Ayo nga hapon sa tanan, nagapasalamat kita sa Ginoo sindi nga hapon nga maka simba kita sa iya kag uh, maka uh, pangamuyo kag uh, maka tuon sa pulong sa Ginoo. Maka pangamuyo kita. Amay nga balaan langit na mo nga Dios, nagapasalamat kami sa sini nga hapon nga maka simba kami Ginoo dira uh, sa imo. Salamat. nga gitagaan ni mo kami sa nga uh, mayo nga lawas nga maka hatag pagid uh, sa imo Ginoo sa nga tion nga maka pamalantong kami sa imo nga pulong Lord uh, gina pray namon sa imo ikaw gid ang maka uh, hatag pagid sa uh, amon nga maka padayon kami sa pag uh, Uh, panimbahon ginoo sa sining adlaw. Lord, ginapray namun sa imo ang mga kautura namun sa mga kalilain na lugar sa kalibutan kaya sa uh, Pilipinas man. Uh, ginapray namun sa imo na uh, ikaw gid ang uh, hatag pagid sa amun sa uh, nakadasi ginoo sa pagpangalagad uh, adira sa imo. Salamat nga ikaw ang amon na Diyos nga labing gamahanan kagasarang lang nga pagkasimbahon uh, sa sining at iyon ginoo. Lord, magkasimba kami sa imo, magkapangamuyo sa isa kag-isa, kagasalamat nga uh, gin, uh, tutuyanin mo kami ginoo na makalabot kami sa sining adlaw sa pagkasimba nila sa imo. Lord, gamit ang imong alagad na magkadala sa pulong nimo na magkahatag pagid sa amon sa nga pagpaumpaw kag sa paghatag pagid sa encouragement na sa amon na ginoo. Gina, salamatan amon ang uh, ining adlaw, ining uh, hapon ginoo sa pagsimba dira sa imo. Sa ngala ni Kristo Jesus. Amen. Psalms 95 verses 1 to 2 says, O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. Mayang aga sa inyong natanan, mga abyan. Pagkantahon nato ng ambahanon, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Thou the Father, Christ our brother, 
Let us sing a song, Count Your Blessings. When upon life's pillows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God Magapangamuyo kita. Ginoo, salamat gid sa kaygayunan nga ginhatag mo sa amon. Kaygayunan ginoo nga sa siningation sa gihapon kami makapadayon sa pagpangamuyo ka magtuon sa mga pulong. Salamat ginoo sa mga nagligad ginoo nga Domingo uh, kag maski man ginoo sa uh, last Friday na kung diin sa pag-commemorate namon, sa pagdumdum namon sa ginhimo ni Kristo Jesus o kabay pa ng mga leksyon ang mga impresyon nga gibutang mo sa amon nga mga ta, nga mga tigipusoon magapadayon ini Ginoo sa panghangkat sa amon. O kabay pa sa amon nga mga maluya, sa amon Ginoo kun kisa nga nagatulog sa amon ikasarang, o kabay pa that the power of your resurrection. Amo Ginoo, ang mga evident sa amon nga mga kabuhi, sa amon Ginoo nga mga pagsunod kapag alagad Ginoo dara sa imo. Buligi Ginoo ang imo nga mga alagad labi na gid ang mga daga minister nga nagalabot Ginoo sa mga kinahanglanon nga nagakinahanglan sang kaluwasan nga pinaagi Ginoo sa pagwali uh, sa pag-share damo Ginoo ang madaladra sa imo nga tubangan gamita Ginoo ang ining iglesia gamita ang mga miyembro kag sa amon man Ginoo nga mga ministries o Ginoo kabay pa nga sa pagpatubo labi na sang amon nga mga kabataan sa amon nga mga young people gamita kami Ginoo ang amon nga junior worship online ang amon nga amon nga youth worship O kabay pag Ginoo, na pinaagi sa sining mga programa, kagsang amon ng mga discipleship, sa mga pag one-on-one, -on -one, maski sa online lang, kagsa kung anuman nga platform Ginoo nga gamiton mo, o kabay pag Ginoo, na magtubo ang imong iglesia, magtubo Ginoo ang next generation, kag kami Ginoo i-uphold mo. Ginoo gindala ko sa imo, ang mga may uh, uh, kabugatan sa sining at iyon. Kabay pa ang amon nga lulan, kay ikaw Ginoo na promise sa amon that all we have to do is to cast our burdens upon you. Lord, you care for us. Kakabay paginoo ang mga nagamalasakit man sa siningatioon. Kakabay paginoo nga makakita sila, hindi lang sang provision sa ilakin ng lanon, kung hindi sa pag-aayo ginoo. 
ikaw ginoo ang promise sa amon ginoo that you are our healer you are our great physician ginoo ginadala ko man sa imo ang mga different ministries as kay ginoo ang pag-share sa mga pulong uh, sa amon nga mga outreaches kag sa amon nga mga missionaries kag diri man ginoo sa sining iglesia o kabay pa ginoo nga manginggamhanan ang imong pulong sa so pag-share namon sini nga ini ginoo it would accomplish what you really wanted to do uh, in changing the lives kag ang pagluwas man ginoo sa nagakinhanglan sa kaluwasan kag pagpatawad ginoo ginadala ko sa imo ang amon ginoo nga mga uh, miyembro labi na gid ginoo ang sa amon ginoo nga mga uh, kabahin ginoo sa amon nga mga layman kag wameso uh, tipigi sila ginoo kabay pa ginoo nga sa gihapon uh, you would spare us especially sa sininga virus kag lord we are really looking uh, forward for the day kun paano mo kami liwat isahon ang amon ginoo nga mga naandan sang una nga mga fellowship ang pag-isa namon bilang family mo But Lord, during this time, enough gino ikaw para sa amon. Buligi kami gino. Buligi man amon mga kauturan. Labo taman gino. Encourage us gino dara sa imo. Ini gino amon nga gina pangamuyo. Labi na gid ang pagwali sa mga pulong. Na hatagan mo, sanggahom, gamiton mo, ang imo gino. Nga lagad sa pag-share sa mga pulong. Pamati gino amon mga pangamuyo. In Jesus name. Amen. The things we see, touch, hear, and feel are the things which owned by God. Even this life, our very own life, is possessed by Him. May this song bless our hearts as we sing with my Father's word. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres this is my father's world i rest me in the thought of rocks and trees of skies and seas his hand a wonders rock this is my father's world The birds their carols raise The morning light, the lily white Declare their maker's praise This is my Father's world He shines in all that's fair In the rustling grass I hear Him pass He speaks to me everywhere This is my Father's world, oh, that we near forget, that though the wrong seems of so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world, the battle is not done, Jesus who died shall be satisfied. Good afternoon and welcome to Don Baptist Church Prayer Service Online. Today is April 7. It is Wednesday again. It is the first Wednesday of this month of April. And salamat sa ginoo nga kita magaw the nine naman sa sining nga hapon sa aton nga paningbahon kag pag pinangamuyo ay sa sining nga tinion sa aton online prayer service. Salamat gid sa ginoo sa inyo nga mga pagpangamuyo pag supporter diri sa Don Baptist Church sa aton mga buluhaton kag mismo man sa aton nga ministry sa Don Baptist Church. Uh, last Sunday, salamat gid sa Ginoo para sa mga ginikanan sa mga kabataan naton para sa Resurrection na uh, Children's um, uh, Musical and salamat gid sa mga kabataan nga nag-upod uh, sa aton sa sinang pamaagi. By the way, duhay ko lang before everything else like gulang idugang ang ini nga pahibalo regarding ini para sa aton nga mga married couples Uh, revisiting our marriage vows. This is an online pep talk on building good marriage. 
relationship based on God's word. So, uh, series one ini uh, sebuas na, okay? Thursday by uh, via Zoom. So, April 8, ang series one is I take you to be my lawfully wedded husband and wife. So, uh, ang speakers is uh, Pastor Gilmore Lawrence Demdam and also our uh, uh, attorney pastor Lee Ferdinand Kaiban. So uh, again, lego gina agda ko gidang tanan for tomorrow para ina sa aton nga mga uh, couples uh, via Zoom sa aton nga uh, uh, revisiting our marriage vows. So uh, nami gidini para sa aton tanan uh, sa sinay pa maagi makapadayon uh, kita and ma-enlighten aton relationships sa aton uh, isa kay isa sa aton nga panimbalay. And uh, again, salamat salamat gid sa Ginoo sa iyang uh, mga pag-preservar uh, sa isa kay isa sa aton. And uh, sa giyapon mga tod sa Ginoo, din kita magakadto aton gid ginabalik-balik kini to observe our uh, health protocols, ang face mask, face shields, wash our hands as often as we can and uh, maintain our physical and social distancing. Kung sa din kita magakadto, uh, pag kung may anak na kita mismo man niya, may ginabat siya na ubo kagsipuan kita na lang maglikaw sa magkadto sa crowds or uh, kadto pa kita sa malls or uh, magkadto sa palibot or kinananay dira. Halonggit kita mga tol sa gino, kay ang ining masakit, ang COVID-19 yara gid sa palibot naton in spite of the fact na ang vaccine ara man. So let's continue to pray for our national leaders and also for our health workers as always. ang aton nga mga kasimanwa dito sa National Capital Region na ECQ sila and also Calabar, Calabar Zone. Uh, let's pray for them and also for the Cebu uh, City and Cebu Province and uh, neighboring uh, provinces. Dira. Let's pray for them and there is a ciudad sing Iloilo City also sa uh, uh, province ng Antique. Uh, Padayan kita sa ciudad sing Iloilo City maski naganubo ang uh, nagkapositive diri nevertheless hindi hindi magpa uh, hatag sa aton nga magrelax magpakalma kundi uh, mangin mahinalungon gid as always mo na gina mention aton to eat healthy foods to uh, observe all our uh, health protocols and also hit um, mention ko eat healthy foods do some exercises make ourselves to be productive sa kundi hindi kita mag sedentary magpabilin sa aton sedentary lifestyle pong ko lang tulog kaon and then lang sa balay lang tao TV or uh, Facebook mga himbo kita uh, mga uh, productive things nga sa kundi hindi mangin idol minds kita and uh, aton man nga mga selves especially lang tao sa mga Facebook dam dam one fake news kagang mga isto story nga do, do hindi amo halong git kita mo aton sige no And uh, sige hapon, uh, continue to pray for, uh, again, there is aton uh, siyudad, aton uh, city mayor, Janet Trenyas, aton uh, vice mayor, uh, Ganson, the whole city council, aton congresswoman, Baronda. Kagpadayan uh, kita sa pag- karon man sa gabi-gabi ang aton uh, TikTok man niya. Uh, Padayan kita mga kabataan sa pag sa Sina and every Sunday. ang junior worship matapos ang online service naton kag sa gabi man ang outflow and uh, again sa diwat uh, stay safe and stay healthy kita pangugit kita utod sa Ginoo nga kita uh, maggamiton sang Dios mangin solusyon sa problema ikaw hindi kita solusyon sa problema mas kita ang uh, problema mga pangamoy kita Ginoo salamat kid sa imo sa sining hapon nga ikaw naman magpakighamba sa amon salamat sa mga pagsabat nimo sa amon mga pangamuyo salamat gid Ginoo sa nagligad nga tatlo ka bulan sa sini nga bul nga tuig sang 2021 ginuoktan mo kami sa liwat amon ginabayaw sa imo ang ini nga uh, bulan sang Abril sa amon tanan sa mga nagaselebrate sang birthdays nila sa sini nga April salamat gid sa imo pagbugay sa pagsugpon mo Ginoo sang dugang nga tuig para sa mga kauturan namon Again, sa Sininga Tinion, may mga kauturan man niya, hindi naman makaupod uh, sila sa ilang panimalay. Pangamugit kami kay uh, Tatay Heria, we pray for your grace sa panimalay nila. Uh, bugay mo ginoo kay Tatay Heria sa inyong kondisyon. Uh, Pangamugit ako, ginoo, 
uh, sa pagbayo uh, mo sa panimalay, sa kaya jeba, sa pag-take care sa iyang panimalay, sa ginikanan niya, ginoo. And we pray continually sa amon nga mga kasimanwa dito sa National Capital Region, sa Calabar Zone Area, sa Cebu, and even today sa my Western Visayas, sa province of Bantiki, and sa iban pagiging nga mga provinces, you know, dito sa siyudad sa Ngilong Ilong City, our City Mayor, Jerry Trenias, ba- Congresswoman Baronda, Vice Mayor Ganzon, kag ang amon nga mga City Council, ang frontliners, mga health workers namon, uh, sa barangay, barangay leaders, kag mismo ang sa quarantine facilities, ginoo, sa luwat nga nabayo, ganda sila namon sa pagpangamuyo, pagkamita namin nga nagagawa, pero may sabalay, makapauli safely, minus ang virus. We pray, O Lord, nga ikaw magpakigihamba sa mong tunga sa sininga tinion, sabdo nga kami paagi sa imong alagad, sa paggamit mo sa iya, ginoo, sa pagdalas ang pulong para sa mong mga kalag, kagkabulusgan sa mong mga tagipusoon. Kagabay pa sa sininga mong pagtipon, ikaw gandang mahimaya, kang madayaw, ni mong pangamuyo, sa ngala ni Kristo Isos. Amen. Just for this evening, we will stop just for tonight sang aton nga series on the Book of Philippians and we will continue on with our series next Sunday. This evening, I would like us to focus, to zero in our attention on the cross of Jesus Christ as we commemorate what is done for us, His death and His resurrection. And as we focus on that, on the topic, on that theme, I'd like us to ponder on the question, 
how is God glorified through the death, the gruesome, the cruel death of his son on the cross? How is God glorified through the cross of his son? And just before I uh, read to you our main passage in Romans chapter 3, verses 23 to 26, allow me to read a couple of verses here. And ponder with me, ask yourself, what are what is one thing that is common on, on these verses? First, I will read Psalm chapter 19, verse 1, and then Isaiah 48, verse 11, and Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. And the word of God says in Psalm chapter 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 11 says, For my own sake, for my own sake, I do it. For how should my name be profaned? My glory I will not share or I will not give to another. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, Worthy are you, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. Now in our main text, Romans chapter 3, verses 23 to 26, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. Verse 26, it was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. Now, before we answer the question, how is God glorified through the cross of Christ? Let us commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Not unto us, O Lord, but to your name give glory as we desire to, to unbox, as we desire to, to feed ourselves of your glory as we focus our attention tonight on the death of Christ on the cross, on the completion of our salvation. I only have one plea, one desire this evening. It is that you will draw each one of us to see how awesome, how magnificent, how satisfying it is to behold your beauty, to behold your glory through the cross of Jesus Christ. May the preaching of your word create in us an authentic worship, create in us a deep sense of conviction against sin, create in us this hatred, this drive to wage war against this, sinful tendencies that we have. And we thank you, Lord, that you have battled, that you are declaring war against the sinful nature of ours through the death of your son, Jesus. And thank you that there is a victory in your name. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, as we start, I'd like you to think. Think of, of something that excites you. Think of something beautiful. Think of something that is for you is awesome. Think of something wonderful. Something that makes you happy. It could be a beautifully painted Burakai sunset. Awesome. Breathtaking. Now ask yourself, how is it that you are capable of such an awe? How is it that we are capable of, of appreciating something, of delighting in something, of being satisfied with something? How is it that we are capable of that? Now, if you look at the Bible, man is created and designed by God with this capacity to take delight, to be delighted, to be satisfied, to be in awe. But this capacity to be to be satisfied, to be in awe, was originally designed by God for us to be in awe, not just of anything, 
or of anyone, but to be in awe of God. Now, glorifying God means taking delight in God. Finding beauty, finding satisfaction on how beautiful God is. That is the reason why God created man. And that is the reason why we have this such capacity to be amazed, to be in awe, to be satisfied, to find beauty in something. Giving God supreme value in and over our lives is the essence of worship. And man is created to worship God in his glory. Now, the problem is, according to Romans chapter 1, verses 21 to 25, this passage describes of how badly we have fallen from that design and intention by God. It says in verse 21, For although they knew God, this is our story, although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Therefore, our main passage in Romans chapter 3, verse 23 concludes, All men have sinned. We all have sinned. How I wish that every time we see something beautiful, how I wish that every time I see something magnificent, something breathtaking, how I wish that it leads my heart to appreciate, to worship the beauty of God. But you know what? The empirical evidences in our lives would attest to the fact that we tend to worship the creature rather than the creator. Isn't that true in our worship? Every time we, we hear a beautiful music, instead of of, of contemplating and reflecting on how beautiful the message of that song is, our hearts tend to ask, tend to wonder, sino na ang singer man? Niya ka nami-nami, gina siya takantahon. Gusto ko na siya kilalahon. Sino ning nagatukar man? Sino ning nagcompose sino man? Instead of our hearts being drawn to God, that God, you have created this music and it is designed to for me to worship you. Instead of us focusing on the lyrics of the song and ponder on how beautiful God is, our sense of awe is kidnapped by a created thing. That's why, how I wish that every time we see something breathtaking, it leads us to a deeper sense of worship to God. But sadly, that's not what it, that's not what it creates in our heart. We tend to worship the creature rather than the creator. And that, by essence, is what the Bible calls sin. Now, what is sin? One of my favorite authors defines sin this way. He said, Sin, it is the glory of God not honored, the holiness of God not reverenced, the greatness of God not admired, the power of God not praised, the truth of God not sought, the wisdom of God not not esteemed, the beauty of God not treasured, the goodness of God not savored, the faithfulness of God not trusted, the commandments of God not obeyed, the justice of God not respected, the wrath of God not feared, the grace of God not cherished, the presence of God not prized, the person of God not loved. That is sin. Every time we yawn, Every time we, we, we turn our backs to the beauty of God, that is sin. Sometimes we think of sin as sin lang ni siya when it starts to hurt other people. Kung wala mo ni siya nag-hurt sa ibang tao, then, then siguro okay lang ni. Like mga sin bila sa atong mind. Wala man ni siya nag-hurt sa ni. Kung magpaminsar ko sa mga lain siya, so maybe okay lang ni. No. Sin is sin. Not because nag-hurt ni siya sa, sa, kay, sa tao. Dira. Sin is primarily sin. Because it is the falling short of God's glory. It is, it is our exchange. It is the fact that we exchange God's glory with something else. That is, by definition, 
is sin. Sin is our rejection of God. Sin is our not cherishing God, our not valuing God, our not delighting in God. Sin is our way of telling God, God, you are not enough. Sin is our way of telling God, God, this created thing is far better than you. Sin is our way of telling God, God, you are not beautiful. That is sin. But then we ask, why is the cross, why is the cross have to be so bloody and hell so ugly? You know, the cross has to be so bloody and hell has to be that ugly because sin is our way of shouting to God, you are not enough. You are not breathtaking. Your glory is not satisfying. Your glory is not beautiful. That is why the cross has to be that bloody and hell has to be that ugly because sin is our way of spitting do ginutupla anta ang glory sang ginoo ining one thing that God really treasures the most this one thing hambal niya sa Isaiah hindi gigid pag i-share sa bisan kay sino this one thing that hambal sa revelation God is worthy of ginutupla anta na we are yawning at God's glory every time we sin The fallen man's rejection of God is a direct assault on the glory of God. This one thing that God treasures the most, we assault it. Our sin is our way of making a post. God, something else is more satisfying than you. Sin deserves the wrath of God because it not only thwarts God's design for us, but it also tramples His glory. It tramples his glory. If glory is one thing that God will not share, could you imagine how precious glory is to God? If God is so willing to send sinners to hell for spitting at his glory because of sin, if God is willing to crucify his son, his sinless son on the cross, because of sin. Could you imagine how important God's glory is for him? That is why hell and the cross are necessary because God will render all accounts settled. About so Romans 3, God is just. That's why hell is necessary. Because hell serves his justice. Because God is just and the justifier. That's why the cross is necessary. God will render all accounts settled either on that bloody cross or in that ugly hell. That's why God battles for the satisfaction of our hearts through the cross. Thank God. Thank God that God battles for the satisfaction and all of our hearts through the cross. How? Ezekiel 36 verse 26 says, and I will give you a new heart. And I will put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone, from you your heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. How will God do that? Through the cross. God is promising everyone who will believe in him, who will believe in Christ, that God will remove this God-hating heart, this heart of stone. God will remove it. And God will give us a new heart, a heart of flesh that will beat for God. That is why the cross is necessary. Because we cannot do it. We cannot do it. Now, if there is one lesson this evening, if there is one lesson that I would like to leave you, the lesson is this. God is glorified in the cross of Christ for it declares the infinite value of God's glory that is attacked by sin. God is glorified in the cross of Christ for it declares the infinite value of his glory that is attacked by sin. Sometimes go wonder, how is God glorified through the cross? Why is the cross necessary? 
nga amay hell how how is God glorified through hell both the cross and hell are pictures of how infinite God's glory is nga amo ni siya ang kabayaran either you will die eternally damned in hell because of your sin or the gruesome and ugly death of Christ will pay it for you that is how God is glorified through the cross of his son Jesus Christ now let me illustrate it this way na isa ka bata na kinsumbang niyang iyang classmate. As a result, as a consequence, yung padala ang ininga bata sa iyang, sa iyang principal's office, reprimanded. Now, on his way out of the principal's office, ang ininga bata, ginsumbang niya naman ang principal. As a result, ang ininga bata got suspended. Now, on his way home, this particular kid saw a policeman. And, and ang policeman ginsumbang niya man. He hit the policeman. As a result, the kid was sent to jail. Now, tungod niya minor siya, ginpagwa siya, and on his way home, nabalitaan niya that the president of their country is vis- visiting their place. Now, during the parade, nakita niya ang president sa ilang country, and he ran towards the president, attempting to hit the president. What do you think will happen to the kid? He will be shot dead. Now, think with me here. Ang crime niya gin-commit pariho lang. Hitting someone. But why is it nagavari, nagavari ang degree sa penalty? You know why? Because the issue here is not what crime was committed. The issue here is to whom the crime was committed against. Nagwonder ka ba nga ang ginoo ang penalty sa sin kamatayon gid? Because sin is a direct assault to God. Sin is a direct assault to God's glory. Sa ato niyo justice system, we serve penalties that fit the crime. That is how our justice system operates. And as far as God is concerned, because He is God, because His glory, because sin is falling short of His glory, sin deserves death. That is the penalty that fit the crime as far as God is concerned. And it shows us how infinitely valuable His glory is. So here, now let, let me just share to you the ka in si parable na truths of how God is glorified through the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, the first thing here, number one, the cross of Christ is the display of the infinite value of God's glory. The cross of Christ is the display of the infinite value of God's glory. Now, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 will tell us, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is anyone who is hanged on a tree. Now, let me ask you, is the law a good thing or a bad thing? Tungod ba lang may lagi kita diri sa ato niya society? Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? The law is a good thing. You know why? Because the purpose of the law is to preserve lives. Could you imagine kung wala layi ang aton nga, ang aton nga nasyon? Everyone can just commit any crime without fear. That's why the law is a good thing. But why is it? Nga ah, si Paul in the book of, of Galatians, nga naghambal siya that the law, is, which is good, is a source of curse to mankind. Why? The law is cursed to mankind. You know why? Because the law could only do one thing for us. To condemn us. The law will only prove that none of us can perfectly obey the law. Therefore, we deserve the punishment of God. That's the only thing that the law will will conclude. We have fallen short. For man to be declared guilty, there has to be two things. First, for a man to be guilty, there has to be a law. And secondly, there has to be a violation. Kung may layi, kag wala ka nag-violate, hindi ka guilty. Kung may ginimo ka man yung isa kabutang na, 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 na wala man ini nag-violate sang any na law, itong wala man sang law, then hindi ka man guilty. But for a man to be guilty, there has to be a law and there has to be a violation. Now let me just cite to you an example of a law. Law is, example, 
Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, and mind. That's the law. That's one of the laws na ginatag sa ginoo sa aton. Na anong violation? Anong violation? Hambal sa Romans 1, we did not honor him as God. We exchanged the truth of God for a lie. We honored the creature more than the creator. Man is guilty. The law has proven that man is guilty and man is worthy of God's wrath. We are all guilty. Man, man's sin begs for God's wrath. And God has to punish sin. Paano ginapanish ang ginoong sin? By pouring down the wrath of His justice because God is just God. So what does that mean for us? What does that mean for man? Nga na fall short sa glory sa ginoong. It means eternal separation from God in hell. That's what it means. Man is facing now a demand that he cannot keep. Anong demand? Perfect the law. E kung hindi mo man perfect ang law, there will be a curse. Anong curse? Separation from God. Man is facing a demand that he cannot keep and a curse that he cannot bear. As far as humanity is concerned, there was no if there was no cross, isa lang din ang way niya masatisfy ang justice ang ginoo. And that is by being condemned eternally in hell. Thankfully, thank God that by His grace, the first part of Romans 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us. From the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. And Romans 3.23 says that though we have fallen short of the glory of God, we are justified by His grace as a gift because of Jesus Christ through the redemption that is in Christ whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. Now, two things here. Gusto ko lang tawa natin. The cross of Christ is God displaying His righteousness. Verse 23 of chapter 3 in Romans says, Romans 3.26 rather, it says, It was to show His righteousness. Ano, anong magpakita sa righteousness ang ginoo? Ang death ni Christ sa cross, ang iya nga propitiation on the cross, is to show that God is righteous. So that He might be just and justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Now the righteousness, the justice, and ang pagtabalaan sang Diyos demands that all accounts be settled. Ang kapasiti lang sang taho nga mabayaran niya ang penalty sang iyang sin is to suffer for eternity in hell. Now without the cross, amulagid na ang way that we can satisfy the justice of God because God is just. He hates sin. God doesn't owe us anything except His wrath his justice, ang kasingkal sang ginoo. His wrath is infinite against sin, and we are all stamped and defined by sin. God demands perfection, and nothing short of perfection enters heaven. This is the picture of a God who is just. Wala isang isa kasala na palampasun ng ginoo. The day will come that God will render all accounts settled, either on the cross. Or in hell. Thankfully, God is not just the just God. But Romans 3 will tell us that He is also the justifier. It means that God is also willing to declare someone not guilty, justified, if that someone, according to Romans 3, believed in Jesus Christ by faith. Trusted Christ by faith means Jesus lang ang makaforgive sa iya. Man is facing demands that he cannot meet and curse that he cannot bear. And then Jesus Christ said, May I? Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. How? By dying on the cross. The cross displayed the infinite worth of God's glory because first and foremost, the cross is God displaying that he is a righteous God. That before he can forgive someone, may penalty get. His justice must first be satisfied. Secondly, not just the cross of Christ is God displaying his righteousness, but secondly, the cross of Christ is God vindicating his glory. 
you know, aside from hell, the cross is the only way for man to satisfy the wrath of God. Since God's glory has been attacked, it has been dishonored by man's sin. Therefore, before sang ginoo mapatawad ang sala, justice has first to be served. Justice must be served. Before sang ginoo forgive ang sala, the penalty that fits the crime in order for God to uphold the sanctity of the glory of His glory that has been attacked and marred by our sin. Hell, in as much as the cross, is God's testament. It is God's announcement, God's proclamation to the world that since I am a just God and sin is a direct assault to my glory, I will not let sin pass. It is God's proclamation that my glory is not cheap. That I am not a cheap God. If you will hear the shout, the, the remorse, ang, 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 ang struggle sa mga tao ngara sa impyerno, it will all declare one thing. God's glory is never cheap. That is the declaration niya ang impyerno. Niya ang may cross. Because ang glory sa ginoo ng aging atake sa sala, hindi hindi cheap. When God sends an unrepentant sinner to hell, it is to show to the world that I am not cheap. That my glory is not something that you can just spat on and trample. When Jesus died on that cross, God made a proclamation to the world that my glory is never cheap. God did not die sa isa ka remote nga place nga wala may makakita siya, no? Jesus Christ died on a hill for the whole world to see nga amuni ang kabayaran sang sala. That a sinless man, that the Son of God has to die because of sin. May it be that every time we see the cross, we see the gravity of our sin. And we see how, how infinitely valuable the glory of God is. That it took the life of the Son of God in order for God to forgive sin, to vindicate His glory. Grace is free in as much as salvation is, but grace, salvation is never cheap. It is never cheap because it took the life of the Son of God. Sometimes we tend to look at the cross and say, this is for me. Well, while that is true, We must also look at the cross and ask, what did it do for God? What did the cross accomplish for God? How is God glorified through the cross of His Son? Well, let me tell you. The cross displayed the infinite value of the glory of God because the cross is the vivid picture of what will happen when God's glory is spat and yawned upon Both the cross and hell are vivid pictures of what will happen kung makasala kita sa ginoo. And that is exactly what we, what we do when we choose sin over God. Could you imagine? Every time we sin, we are shouting at God, God, you are not satisfying. Could you imagine how many times a day we shout that to God? Stop looking at the cross and say it's all love. Yes, it is love, but it is also justice. It is also wrath. It is also judgment. It is also righteousness. It is also holiness. It is a display of God vindicating His glory. The second thing here, not just the cross of Christ, is the display of the infinite value of God's glory. But the second thing here, The cross of Christ is the display of the immeasurable volume of God's love. Ang gusto ko na i-balance. The immeasurable volume of, of God's love. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law 
by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is anyone who is hanged on a tree. Romans 5, 8 would tell us, Christ showed his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, he died for us. While we were still in a state of being rebellious, of declaring, of waging war against God because of our sin, he already died for us. How beautiful is that? The infinite, the immeasurable volume of the love of God. There's only one way for God to redeem man from the curse of sin. And that is by bearing the dreadful curse of sin on the cross. What drove Christ? Yung patay sa cross. It's love. Romans 5.8 In the word ba lang na redeem, in Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. We have heard this word redeem time and time again. This word redeem is a very beautiful picture of how God rescued His people. And ano ba lang ang plano sa ginoo for rescuing them? Now tonight, gusto lang ko mag-share sa tatlo ka Greek words. Nga amo ni siyang ginagamit, translated ni siya sa aton English as redeem or ransom. And the gapate ni siya sa beautiful na picture kung ano bala ang ginhimo sa ginoo. Kag ano bala ang plano sa ginoo for saving us. Now let me share to you three Greek words. You don't have to take note of the Greek words. Just take note of the thought and ano bala ang, ang implication sa sining word. Now the first Greek word is the word agorazo. Kung nakakadto ka mo sa kagayan, ang ilang uh, tinda, ang tawag nila, ang ilang marketplace, ang tawag nila agora. Now, the Greek word is agorazo. This is used in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. By your blood, you ransom people for God. Now, the Greek word ransom there is translated, or in Greek is the word agora. Now, what agorazo? What does agorazo mean? It means to go to market to buy. Now, this is a verb. Nyang bot silingon, to go to market to buy, purchase, or acquire as property. Now, in the first century, ang mga slaves, ang mga slaves, gina display ni sila sa slave market. And then people who have money would go to the slave market and buy and acquire properties for themselves. Then ang ina, a slave naging makal nila ilan na posasyon to acquire for themselves, to be their property. And sinners, kita nga mga sinners, amuni ang picture na before we were redeemed by Christ. We are displayed in the slave market of sin But then, Jesus Christ purchased us through His blood. We were once displayed in the market. Christ purchased us. That's the word, agorazo. Now, the second Greek word na ginagamit ni siya to refer to our English word redeem is the Greek word, exagorazo. And in Greek, no, gamay lang yun nga, nga Greek nga tutorial, hindi mo yung kusagad-sagad, but ang word niya, ex, sa Greek, it means out of. And since agora means market, exagrad so means out of the market. It means it is used in Galatians 3.13. Christ redeemed us. It means to buy out. To buy out of the market, especially purchasing a slave with a view of giving the slave freedom. Ang agorad so bot silingon gin bakal kita sa ginoo. Pero hindi lang nag-untak ang kaluwasan na It is also It also refers to exagorad. So meaning, ginbakal kita sa ginoo in the slave market with the intention of giving us freedom, with the intention of freeing us from being slaves. That's the word exagorad. So. And the last word here, translated as redeemed or ransom, is the word lutruo. This is the main verb. Makita niya nato in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. About the Even as the son of, Ma, son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom. That's the word lutruo in Greek for many. Lutruo means price of release. It means the ransom money to free the slave. Manumission of slaves. Be released from the power or influence of his previous master through a receipt of a ransom. For what purpose? To be an exclusive personal possession. Now imagine these three Greek words, agorazo. We were once displayed in the slave market of sin. 
price consciousness. Exagrad so. Displayed kita in the slave market, gin bakal kita sa ginoo, but then gin pagwa yun na kita sa slave market for us to be free. We are no longer available. Gin bakal na kita sa ginoo. We are now his possession. And then, lutro o. Ang ginoo naghatag sang ransom money that they receive gin in order for us to be freed from the influence of our previous master, of our previous influencer, in order for God to make us His exclusive personal possession. This word, Lutruo, in gamit mo siya sa Titus chapter 2, verse 14, shows us that the death of Christ on the cross has purchased us from, from a life of slavery. Slavery to lawlessness in relation to God's command. Meaning, sangin ba, sangin lutru, o nakita sangin, o we are no longer slave to sin. We are, we are not no longer influenced sang atun previous na owner because we are now God who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people. Na muna siyang lutru, o bala nga, to be God's exclusive possession. Jesus Christ redeemed us so we could be his own special people. How did Christ redeem us? Hambal ni Paul in 1 Corinthians 6.20, you are bought with a price. What price? Hebrews 10 verse 4 would tell us, not by blood of bulls and goats. We are purchased by the precious blood of the Son of God. Aguranso. Exaguranso and the true of. Bought out of the market to be God's special and exclusive possession. What great love is that? Duma imagine ko pa nga mapatay ang isa ka person para sa isa ka good na person. But a good person dying for his enemies? Unimaginable. Unimaginable. When Jesus Christ shouted on the cross, it is finished. It means that the full payment has been made. It has been paid in full. And what is the receipt? Ano ba lang resibo na ton? To prove, to prove, naging makal, naging man kita sa ginoo. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22 says, Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. This is also supported by Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire the possession of it, for what purpose? To the praise of His glory. Ano ang ato nirisibo? The Holy Spirit. We now have the seal of the Holy Spirit to give us the guarantee that we are now God's. Wala na yung makakuha sa atong. Anong purpose ang ginaungagin luwas ng kita? For the praise of His glory. That is how God is glorified through the cross. May we realize that salvation is salvation from God because He is just. Salvation from His wrath. But salvation is secondly salvation by God because we do not have the capacity to, you know, to escape. So we need salvation from God Himself. And thirdly, salvation is to God. By God, from God, through God, and for God. For the praise of His glory. Now, beloved in the Lord, the Bible is a story of a faithful God. The Bible is a story of a faithful God who remained faithful to unfaithful people who failed him time and time again. God is called the just and the justifier. There is hell because God is just. He cannot turn a blind eye on sin. God's glory that has been trampled and spat upon by man must be vindicated. But there is also the cross because God is the justifier of those who will place their faith in Jesus Christ. Belive on the Lord, maybe you are here tonight. You are listening to this sermon and you know you wala ka pag a point in your life that you have placed your trust in Christ believing that He alone can forgive you. I invite you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Ask Him to forgive you. With a broken and contrite heart, come to Him. 
put your faith in him that what is done on the cross is sufficient to forgive you. God is glorified through the bloody and the gruesome cross of his son because it displays the infinite value of his glory and the immeasurable volume of the love of God. You know, this sermon will have been preached and penned in vain if this will not affect the people and the preacher in at least three areas. May this sermon affect us in our personal concept of sin. Sin is our declaration of war against God. Sin is our way of shouting to God, you are not enough. May it be that before we choose sin over God, we would think of the cross, what it did for us. And secondly, may it convict us hard enough to declare war against sin every day. God is battling for the awe of our hearts through the cross. May we daily hate it as we ask God for grace as it affects our concept of, of how ugly sin is. Personal concept of sin. Secondly, may this sermon affect in relation to our personal evangelism. God will render all accounts settled either on the cross or in hell. Isettle gidya sang ginong sin account naton. No excuse. It's either ikaw ang masettle sin sa imperno or you will trust that Jesus Christ already has settled it on your behalf on the cross. And thirdly and the last, may this affect our personal worship. May it be that every time we think of the cross, it will lead us to think na ginoo ang munigilik ka grabe ang pagpalangga mo sa akin. Na ginoo ang munigilik ka grabe ka infinitely valuable and glory mo that it took the life of your son para nga mapatawad ko sa akin sa lahat for spitting on your glory. Our lives are to be lived willingly to the glory of God. Or we will serve His glory unwillingly in our damnation. You know, looking at hell, how is God glorified in hell or through hell, the existence of hell? Hell is a proclamation to the world that God's glory is not cheap. God will render all accounts settled either on the cross or in hell. Beloved in the Lord, every tongue will confess in heaven and on earth and under the earth, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. May this sermon create in us a deeper sense of worship and admiration and appreciation of how beautiful the glory of God is through the cross of His Son. Let us pray. Dear God, loving Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for this time of studying tonight. For making us realize that your glory is not something that we can just spat on or trample upon. There is hell. There's the cross of Christ. Because we men have fallen short. And you are a just God who will settle all sin accounts either on the cross of your son or in hell. I thank you for your grace that we need not settle it ourselves in hell. Believing in Jesus Christ, we can be forgiven because his death on the cross has fully satisfied the demands of your wrath and of your justice. And for that reason, we worship you. You will not stop every single day praising you for the gift of salvation that you've given us. Not unto us, O Lord, but to your name give glory. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you sing this song today, Mabless ikaw, kag uh, mameditate natin kung sino ang ginoo o ano siya katutong sa inyong mukot sa akong nakabu. Mga kanta ko natin, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Let's pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your faithfulness to us. Thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to have fellowship with you. Thank you for your word, which is always available for us to correct, to rebuke, and even to remind us, Lord, especially sa amun ginoong pag-alagat, panlakaton sa inyo. Thank you for using your, your servant. Ang pangamuyo yung ginoo na whatever ng mga messages, learnings, ng amon ginoo na batian, na pabilin ina sa mga tagipuso na guna-una, magamit na amon ginoo sa pagpadayo na amon sa pagkabuhi na matarong, maayo sa iyong matubangan. Kimita kami ginoo ang pagpakamaayo. O di kami sa talang natiyon. Ang pamuyo ginoo, that you will continue to use us in a special way, in a way that you desired for us, Lord. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit with us now and forever. Amen.